under this umbrella of we want responsible water policy in Wisconsin. However, whatever brought you into this room today, I just want to say thank you for taking time. During in the middle of the week, when everyone has jobs and things to do, to come down here and you know petition our government that we, our voices matter. So I'm, my name is Mary Doherty. I live in Bayfield, Wisconsin. Ooh. And we're really excited to kick off our first of many, hopefully, Citizens Water Lobby Days. I want to recognize my co-organizers, Christy Greeny and Don Eastad. I don't know where they are, but if you ever need a wedding, uh, <laughs> a, 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 re a reunion, an invasion of a small country plan, these are your people. <laughs> we, we, I'm not joking, they, but this work, all this stuff, like the buttons and the pens and the lanyards, that was Christy. She's an amazing, amazing organizer. And so, and like most girls, <laughs> Like most grassroots citizen-led events, this one started with an innocent-looking email that just said, about a month ago, that said, I know an anonymous donor who's willing to pay for five charter buses to get people to Madison to talk about water. What do you think? <laughs> Christy and I thought, well, that seems like a good idea. And the train left the station. And as you can see by the size of the crowd here today, the response was overwhelming. We're at a crossroads in Wisconsin. Our water and quality of life is threatened by industry in this state. In response, leaders and heroes are standing up and demanding accountability from industries and their elected officials who are polluting and overpumping the waters of Wisconsin. Our demand is simple today. We refuse to accept an open for business mantra that's led to privatizing profits into the pockets of corporate farmers, frac sand owners, real estate developers, mining companies, and the pipeline titans of industry, while the cost of doing business in terms of polluted and depleted water sources is passed along to us, Wisconsin citizens. Yeah, yeah. We believe that Wisconsin citizens deserve more protection from the DNR and our elected officials than we're seeing today. We believe our government's primary task is to protect the health and safety of its citizens, and we intend to engage and demand accountability from our legislators and regulatory officials until we have certainty that they are working for us, not corporations. Representative democracy is a lot of work, and it requires frequent tending by its citizens. We must feed it with our stories about who we are, what we value, and how we intend to protect what we value. Today will be an unconventional lobby day. We haven't provided you with a uniform ask or message because we believe the strongest message is an individual one, informed by what matters to you. Our constitutional right to engage with our, represent our representatives and government is strengthened by our diversity as citizens. Lawmakers need to hear a variety of different voices and stories calling for responsible water policy because that's how good laws are made. <coughs> Law that reflects the will of the people, not big business. We've defined water as our common ground today, but it's up to each of you to tell your individual story and to demand the responsible water policy that's meaningful to you and to your community. Let's start where we stand and make the, make the road by walking. But this is a big deal, demanding accountability from our regulators and our elected officials. And it can get heavy at times. But we can't let that discourage us. Struggle and adversity brought us to the Capitol today, and we're here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Struggle and adversity brought us to the Capitol today, and we're here because we're fighting for our water, our homes, our children's future, and the quality of life in our communities around the state. It sounds pretty David and Goliath, right? But here's the secret about struggle. It's not all bad. Struggle is what prompts us to ask ourselves the following three questions. Who are we, what do we value, and how do we protect what we value? When we answer these questions around our kitchen tables, in the aisles of our grocery stores, in library meeting rooms or church basements, we're breathing life into our democracy and our right to fair and just governance. Woo! Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, this is how it happens. It happens in way to the future we want to see, one story, one person, and one stand at a time. Struggle is only bad if we decide the fight isn't worth it, 
And we all know this fight for water is not only worth it, it's steeped in elemental capital T truth. Truth that says we have a right to clean and abundant water. Clean water, public health, the right of Wisconsin citizens to be safe in their homes, these are bipartisan issues. These issues are human issues. Water contamination and depletion makes no distinction between belief systems. It doesn't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It doesn't care what legislative district you're in. Water knows no boundaries. Mines, pipelines, high cap wells, and cables, they're all an equal opportunity hazard. They harm everyone, regardless of gender, age, race, creed, or political belief. Not only are we all susceptible to the ill effects of industrial water contamination, we all have a responsibility to change it. David Brower, founder of the League of <coughs> Conservation Voters, said, Polite conservationists leave no mark, save the scars upon the earth that could have been prevented had they stood their ground. We intend to stand our ground today and moving forward every day. We've defined our common ground as clean water. We're inviting our elected officials to stand with us. Simply put, we're just people who are protecting our water, our homes, our family farming heritage, and quality of life from industries with a horrid track record of polluting and poisoning communities. We're asking our elected officials to listen to citizens who are fighting every day to keep their communities safe from the dangers posed by these industries like factory <coughs> farming, pipelines, frac sand mines, high cap mines, <coughs> and iron and metallic mining. It's important as you move through these halls today that all precedent, all settled law, and just legislation started out as an out there idea, as a there is no way that's going to work, that's going to fly, or that's going to pass. But they did work, and they do work because of people like you who've defined your values and you're not backing down. Rick Young, a social change thinker, which is actually a job which I think is funny, from Toronto, sums it up nicely. My point is to give up, my point is that to give up hope is not just to deny the possibilities of the future, it is also to deny the lessons from the past. The world can change and does change. And what seemed almost impossible looking forward can seem almost inevitable looking back. And that's, I think, what we should carry forward as we move into the Capitol today. We'll have some speakers in here. We have speakers lined up. But the point of today is to get you all out in the Capitol, to get you all talking to legislators. And you don't need to just talk to, obviously, to stop at your own legislator's office, but spread the word. Good policy needs a diversity of, of input. And so we're asking you all wear these lanyards today because there's a lot of media in-house. And if you get stopped, tell your story. We don't have... I don't care what you say, I think that, that is, if I can have one, if we can, Christy down and I talked a lot about this, that we want you guys to speak your truth, speak why you're here today, under the umbrella that we're all gathered under, which is, we want to see clean and responsible water policy coming out of these halls. So with that, I need to find my schedule, but I think we have some, a couple legislative aides that are going to be coming up at 1215 to give you all a boot camp. That said, if you are comfortable going out there, you've already done this, you're not feeling nervous about going to speak to the people that you elected, go ahead and go out now. If you, if you all picked up a schedule, you can see you know, when we're having the speakers, definitely stop back in. But you know, I want to have people here to listen to the speakers, but the point is to get out there. And so um, with that, we're going to wait for five minutes. But that's okay.